Welcome to 180 U-Turn, the talk show that features some of the greatest conversion stories of our time. Stories of men and women who are on the highway to hell when they encountered a Damascus Road experience that completely turned their lives around. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, and today I'm broadcasting live from the Home of Hope, a ministry of Teen Challenge in Casa Grande, Arizona. It's one of the most premier detox and rehab facilities for drug and alcohol abuse. And for more information on their rehab services, their weekly meetings and special events, just go out to their website at tcaz.org. As soon as you come on it, you're gonna see our programs at the top of the bar, menu bar, scroll down and hit Home of Hope. And by the way, it's one of the few detox facilities that I'm aware of, even on the national scene, that allows their children to participate with Mom's Detox, which I think is huge and significant. And listen, if you want to write me at the show, please do. I love your stuff. Love the Bible verses. Keep the theology off the table. You know, I don't want to do that. Uh, but it's Steve at 180uturn.com. That's Steve at 180-Y-O-U-T-U-R-N.com. And I'm happy, again, to always answer as best I can. Uh, today on 180, we're continuing our spotlight on the testimony of Manny Stockton, day three. If you've missed day one and two, Monday and Tuesday show, go back out. I always suggest hit YouTube and watch it in chronology. You'll get a really good idea of her story. And it's a story and it's a sad story. I'm so sorry to say. So, you know, it's funny. I asked you uh, a couple times now mm -hmm. and that event didn't happen. It didn't uh, wake you up or that right. event didn't shake you out of right. your stupor. So mm -hmm. I always wonder, uh, the Bible talks about us, our hearts are so seared or our conscience is dead right. or our, we have no feeling, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's exemplary of what we went through now so far you're out of prison mm -hmm. but you're you just rehook you just started reconnecting with meth media about 48 hours after i got out but i'm always amazed no matter what town you can go into you should be able to hook up in a very quick uh, opportunity mm -hmm. is that true yes, so sir. your time involved is very yes, quick and you can be able to do that yes sir okay yes, sir. so let's talk about the next thing i'm going to talk about is you talk about a relationship mm -hmm. now I'm just going to use this word. What we're going to talk about, would you consider this as a codependent relationship? Um, I would say yes and no. Well, give me the yes part and the no um, part. And this is with the, this is with the father of um, my child now, who's four. Um, when we actually met, well, we've known each other since we were little, um, he, he didn't do math. You know, mm -hmm. he, it wasn't his thing. And so um, I feel like it was more of a codependent relationship for him because um, mm -hmm. there was no, unfortunately, love mm -hmm. for me for him in this. Um, Bella Grace, who is my four year old, um, she, you know, this was not a planned thing. Mm -hmm. She, she just, um, I, I got pregnant. You mm -hmm. know, in in the midst of this, and um, unfortunately, used through my whole pregnancy up until about you know a couple of weeks before I had her. But he wasn't a user. No, not at the not at the time. And not he yet. knew you were right, and so and he would you know he would he would fund that mm -hmm. um, all for the simple fact that he wanted to try to be a family. And that was not, you know, that was not my goal. That was not. Well, okay, so what's, I'm, I'm, we're trying to figure out who's the abuser here. Is it you, you don't love him or him? What is he, is he physically abusing you? Is he, is he calling you names? What oh, is no, he? that was me. That would, that would be. That, that's why I was, yeah. Right, yeah. So if he would try to hide the drugs, take the drugs away, whatnot, I would be the aggressor. Establish the relationship. Yes, it was me. It was always, it, it was me. And then. So I got clean um, the last couple of weeks so I could have Bella. So her system would end up being clean. Mm -hmm. um, so they wouldn't come and take her. Um, and I'll tell you right now, there I, I shouldn't have that child, you know. DCS, should she should not have made it with me, period. Mm -hmm. um, had her, you know, um, took her home from the hospital and took all of the pain medication that I got, you know, from having a C-section and traded it for meth. Mm -hmm. And that was just a day and a half later. And so um, after having Bella and, you know, living in the mm -hmm. house that I grew up in, you know, um, was left that house living in the house that I grew up in and her dad, you know, being there and, and him working, him going to work, I'm working. But then it was like the physical, 
abuse, you know, mm -hmm. he would try to take the drugs or try to do this. And unfortunately, and, and I'm all, I always try to be very transparent about this. Um, I would fight, I would fight, I would be holding her. I would fight, he would be holding her. I would fight him. You're talking physically duking her. Right, yes. Yeah, you're you know, and, and he's not fighting back and this is me fighting. And that's just, you know, meth had completely mm -hmm. taken over my life. It was an everyday Would you have thing done this if you were conscious? No. Yeah, see, no, no. okay, so, 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 just correct me, you know, you know, this alters your personality. Absolutely, absolutely. It changes who you are. Absolutely. It can drain the natural affection. Usually when we come on this show, it's gonna be the guy with terrible language towards towards the gal. Right. It's gonna be abusive, they're gonna knock her through the wall, beat her up, she's gonna be going to the hospital, hits the kids, blah, 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 blah. Right. This is a complete turnaround here. Right. And you, if you would have been normally sober and right. walking in sobriety, you would never have thought this way. Oh no. No. This is why I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying, if you're watching this show and you're saying, Steve, I can't believe that. I mean, well, I'm just telling you, mm -hmm. heads up, uh, it is, meth is attractive. Yeah. It's like an angel of light. You know, it doesn't right. look dark. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. Makes you feel great. And I'm just saying it can alter and, and then, modify your personality. And then it turned into hell. And then it turned into, I had, I had to have it every day. And if I didn't, you know, get that, you know, because truth be told, you know, you go to your dealer, your dealers run out and then they have to wait for someone else to bring it in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes there's a waiting period and when that would happen, I would just lose it and I would lose control. And, and unfortunately, you know, my child suffered from that. Bella mm -hmm. at, at a very early age, she started walking at about eight, nine months old smart child but along the way until i came back into teen challenge with her when she was about one and a half she stopped talking and i didn't know that i did not realize that she said mama and that was about it so and before that she's communicative mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now now most parents i'm just, i'm asking you mm -hmm. most parents say i wonder does my kid have asperger's does he have right. uh, autism, uh, autism? autism. Uh, you know i mean you would right. you would go in your mind you go run down the inventory mm -hmm of shouldn't that child, what happened here? They right. were already communicating, right. mm -hmm. yeah. And I had no idea. Um, I did meth in front of her. Um, I took her, I took her everywhere with me, you know, to the dealer's house mm -hmm. to, to do this, to get this. It was very seldom, and I still try to look back, but that I didn't, I didn't let anybody else watch her. Mm -hmm. I always had her, and I don't know if it was, I, I still to this day, you know, couldn't tell you why. I wouldn't even let her dad take her that much. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, through this, her dad, you know, he ended up asking me one day, he said, I just wanna know why you leave all the time. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, meth, I, I wanna know. And I said, okay, you wanna try it? That's fine, you can try it, go mm -hmm. ahead. And so he tried it, and unfortunately, to this day, um, he has his own problems. Mm -hmm. And um, meth driven. You know, mm -hmm, has his own problems, and you know he's he's not in her life um, at all. We, which is you know a, a good thing. Um, she doesn't she doesn't know him. Um, mm -hmm. She doesn't, obviously she doesn't remember him. But, but basically but he's, you he's, introduced him to meth. Yes, yes. And his life tanked. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Now see, here's the thing. And I want to talk about this because this happens usually in reverse again. Just mm -hmm. there's mo I have more guys with this story than gals. Right. So I have uh, somebody, a, a very close person to you and they're hooking you up, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he resisted this for a long time. Some people, and I'm going to ask you this, some people do it. The reason he started in is he just wants to be with you. Right. Maybe he wants to, if you're doing this, then I'm going to do this. If right. you're you're into it that much, I guess I'm going to do it. Right. you got to be very careful. If you really love people like this, you don't want to soil them with everything that you're into, right? right. It's, it's bad enough that you're into it. 
And so now we don't want to bring somebody else to and and I'm revolted by the thought that you're doing this in front of your kid. Right. right. And, and yes, uh, if uh, that would have come out, then yes, you, the child should have mm -hmm. been taken away. Oh yeah. So so and I know you know that now. Right. Uh, but I want to put a strength to some of the things we're talking about mm -hmm. because I want you to wake up before you go through a ten year spin like like uh, uh, Mandy did. If I can interrupt your trip and say, man, every time I on your show, Steve, it seems like, it seems like people are going through this 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. They could have found God early on and got this whole thing done with, right? right. But, okay, mm -hmm. I don't want to get ahead. Now, we're not even at the tragedy of this episode yeah. yet. So, so he's out of your life, out of Bella's life. You're still doing meth. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you're still holding on to a job, right? Basically, mm -hmm. right? Maybe that which is and odd. Was, and yeah. was um, coaching kids in basketball. And was, wow. Yeah, was, was doing that well, too. Not my kid, stuff. if I knew right. about it, right? Right, yeah, absolutely. Not going to happen. No, yeah. Uh, I, can't, I, can't, I have mm -hmm. girls, uh, they play mm -hmm. basketball. Yeah, I would, that, would not, mm -hmm. that would not go with me mm -hmm. because I never know when the coach is going to turn dealer. Right, right. So, all right, now. Let's talk about your cousin because I'm, I, I, I know what happened. I just don't know how it got to that point. Why don't you mm -hmm. unpack that? Um, so I come from a large family and um, my, my cousin was the only other one that did drugs, that did meth. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, had been in Aryan Nation, you know, was involved in that um, for years. That was, you know was just Mark and um, so he actually had a warrant um, and the cops have been looking for him this has been going on for months and one night you know I just insisted that we go somewhere and just insisted and insisted and insisted and, and he didn't want to. and he didn't want to go and um, I insisted and so we ended up going and um, he ended up getting shot and killed um, by another dealer or drug somebody? By a, a police officer. Mm -hmm. And so, um, where we had gone to... Um, In front of you? Mm -hmm. And where we had gone to, um, someone who, uh, everybody knows everybody, had seen him and, and called the cops, everybody knew that there was a warrant for his arrest. And so, a, a cop came before backup came and walked up to us um, said that you know mark proceeded to pull something out from his waistband but he did he didn't have a gun on him um i think it was just the cop just jumped before mm -hmm. you know he didn't know what to do he was a younger cop and so he shot him and and shot him twice and and killed him and in um, front of you yes sir yes, have you ever sir. seen somebody die before no this is your first time no. yes, and it's your cousin Right. Your own right. blood. Right, right. Yeah, that's so, tough to take. And so um, that was just, at that point, you know, I just completely lost, like, any will that I had to live. Um, this is worse than your mother's passing. Right. This was also the first time, I'll throw this in there, that my child was not with me. My dad had my child. I had always had Bella with me, mm -hmm. and my father had her, and, you know, when that happened, and then, you know, the family, and, and then just everything came out for the next couple of weeks. Now, that was in December um, of 2018, and so for the next couple of weeks, I couldn't tell you, I can tell you what happened, because I have mm -hmm. no idea. I was mm -hmm. just... Ah, and um, the program that the Teen Challenge that I went through, they didn't have a women and children's program. And I just remember always thinking, I'm just going to die in my addiction because I'm not going to go anywhere else. You know, I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm just not going to go anywhere else. And, but God, mm -hmm. <laughs> in January, um, they opened up a women and children's program and January 26th, um, the director who's now the president of the Hoping Home, she actually flew us back and we were the first family, mm -hmm. um, the first mother and daughter to enter um, the Linus and the Lamb program in New York. I just wanted to make care. sure I check another box here. Uh, Bella was not with you when this incident with your cousin happened. Right. 
another God event. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just check that box, right? right. Yeah, that's to me, that's it. That's another one of those things mm -hmm. that God puts on the plate. Well, listen, right. uh, we're going to continue this story, all, all, but tomorrow we get to talk about the fun part, right? Uh, so we, we euphemistically call it Conversion Thursday, right. you know, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that. And I, I just want to, again, uh, if you're hearing this, you say, Steve, I got my own problems. I'm meth addict. I got kids. Uh, this could be the place to dry out. I mean, this could be a place that could really help you. If it helped, listen, if it helped Mandy, why can't it help you? If God can straighten out Mandy, if God can fix Steve, why can't he fix you? And I just want to give you that invitation. If you've heard anything along the line when we're talking about it, please feel free to contact the Home of Hope, especially if you're local here in this area in Phoenix. And we have other places that you can touch base with. We, we know some of the facilities. For more information on everything that's happening here at Home of Hope down here in Casa Grande, just go out to the website at tcaz.org. And as soon as you come onto the, the site, hit the our programs on the top menu, It'll come, it'll open up and hit Home of Hope and all the information will be there on their services, rehab, everything they're doing. So until next time, I'm Steve Savant. And remember, no one's outside the reach of God. No, not one.